Hey girls, gays, theys, and fays, it's Moth, and before we get into this week's episode of She, They, Just Like Me for real, I wanted to address something. In this week's episode, we review the 1993 film Gender Troublemakers by Xanthra Phillips and Jean Bay. And at the beginning of the discussion, I briefly mention their zines they put out around the time, the Gender Trash from Hell publications, but I don't think I quite gave Jean Bay or Myra Salil Ross her proper credit. At the time of the recording, I was unaware of how many films she had put out and how long she had been at it. And one thing I regret in this review is that I'm not really as knowledgeable on either Xanthra or Myra as I wish I was. And I just didn't want to seem like I was downplaying their contributions in any way. At the time, I just wasn't very well informed, unfortunately. So with that said, if any listeners or viewers have any more information about Xanthra or Myra, please let us know in the comments because we are just absolutely fascinated by these two. We would love to know everything about them. We are obsessed and we hope you enjoy this week's episode. I'm Siobhan. And she, they, just like me. For real. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. How you doing? Pretty good. How was your week? Uh, well, well, two weeks. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I've been in the field all week, you know, working like 10, 12 hour days out in rural Texas, digging holes, hiking around. Um, and, you know, beyond the tiredness, uh, I'm thriving out here. You know, I... I, you know, I'm posting a lot on my Twitter, as you'd probably see, like, mm-hmm. cool things that I'm, I'm finding and seeing, and I love it. It's, it's great to be outside all the time and, and you know, exercising a lot. And, um, yeah, uh, that said, I am extremely ready for a long nap. <laughs> How's your week? A very well-deserved nap, I, I must add. And that is also... Uh, I'd be remiss not to let the folks know that's at Ethernet Hottie on Twitter yes. uh, to see all of Siobhan's findings, musings, yeah. funny shit. Pictures of my holes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's an abundance of hole pictures that yeah. are waiting for you exactly. at Ethernet Hottie on Twitter. Exactly. Watch me post hole. <laughs> I am your girl moth at Twitter, and yes. my week... Uh, sucked shit, but it's okay because we're good now. We're 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 on an upswing. Finally, uh, late That's last good. week, I realized or uh, discovered that I had somehow uh, contracted pink eye and a very terrible cough, uh, which might or may may or may not have been strep. We don't know, but um. After days and days of treating it with eye drops and other medication, uh, it's finally gone away. I think tomorrow, as of recording day, is my last uh, day of eye drops, which is great because I, um, I'm i not very good at taking eye drops. I've never been good at it. And they suck. They're so hard. This has been the... The kind of, what's that called? Like, exposure therapy, like, bitch, you're going to learn today. Kind of things of, like, you don't have a choice. This is the only way your eyes are going to fucking clear up is if you get these goddamn eye drops. So I finally figured out how to do it. Nebula's been very patient with me. And we finally figured out a system that works the day before... We're, we don't have to do it anymore, yeah. but better late than never. I just hate doing eye drops, too. Like, I t- I'm totally with you, girl. It's just, like, the worst thing. Like... I always miss, I always pour way too much and just let it drip down my face, you know, like I'm sobbing. And I'm feeling a lot better now. I'm not coughing nearly as much. The fucking toll that took on my throat. I, <laughs> I sent Siobhan a couple voice clips mm-hmm. uh, 
just to give her an idea of how bad <laughs> my, my voice sounded. And I don't think you really got an, a, a full grasp on how bad it was because there were some days where it just sounded absolutely miserable. But we're done. We're past it. That's yeah. all in the past now. And I look, I don't know what you're talking about, okay? Like, your your vo- the voice memos you sent me, they were, like, sultry. And I was like, ooh, mm. damn. My girl moth, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> See, there, there's the silver lining to everything. Exactly. Uh, and also, you know, uh, beyond that, I'm glad you're feeling better. You know, I know, like, Thank being you. sick, like, oh, it sets you back so much. It's, like, hard to, like, feel comfortable with yourself. Yeah, ugh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad, glad that's clearing up. Yeah, I finally felt cute for, like, the first time in, like, a week this morning. So I was riding a euphoric high that lasted me a few hours of just like i feel fucking good i look better than i have in a week the chest waxing that nebula hooked me up with last week is still looking really good too so hell yeah i'm I'm feeling good that's amazing I, i got my confidence back i got my groove back it's like when you're that sick for that long you forget what it's like to not be sick yeah, and you're like, will I ever feel normal again? You know, and you like realize <laughs> this is the new normal. Exactly, yeah, and you like realize how like good you have it when you're just normal. It's like, you know, normal is great when you're when you're when nothing's bothering you. Mm, that's perfection. Being healthy, <laughs> chef's kiss. <laughs> oh yes, one hundred percent. Clean bill of health, ten out of ten. Would recommend. Oh my god. So. What we're talking about this week is a little change of pace, folks. Uh, I know after the first couple episodes, we talked about uh, albums that we both liked very much by trans femme artists. This week is a little diversion, a little swerve, keeping you all on your toes. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who I saw tweet about this. I even tried to search it on Twitter, and I just... That thread that I saw is just... I, I can't find it, which which sucks, because it had some information about the film that I was hoping to uh, to be able to share. But I think our opinions and feelings about what is discussed in the film itself should be enough. Yeah. It is called Gender Troublemakers from 1993 by uh, Xanthra Phillips, who in weird podcasting time coincidence um actually just passed away uh 10 years this monday wow february 5th uh 2014 and um i'm not sure exactly how old she was but i'm just gonna say judging from how old she was in the film um way too young way too young and um jean b they're both uh canadian if you can tell from the film with their <laughs> Um, occasional French accents, especially Jean B has quite the French accent. Yeah, she's the a, a Quebecois queen, you know. They are adorable. I love them. Um, Me too. So, some information I was able to find was that they were very active in circulating uh, zines back in the day, hmm. and I actually found one of them. Um, it's called uh, "Gender Trash from Hell." Oh my god. They were so ahead of their time. Oh, they really were. It's 40 pages. It's like it has illustrations, poetry, uh stories. It even has a movie review in there. Wow. The main reason I wanted to bring this to the show. Both of us are baby trans. I'm just shy under 2 years of being on HRT, you've... Just over six months for me for everything. Well, yeah, I I guess we're on the same page as far as being um, femme-identifying. Yeah. Because when I started HRT two years ago, I didn't start identifying as trans-femme until, yeah, probably just about a few, like, about the same time you did. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, I think that's an interesting distinction, too. Uh, I think because you, like, started medically first... Um, or not first, but like, or, you know, at, at an earlier time scale than um, socially uh, to a woman specifically, um, where like I, you know, we've talked about this in our in our past, but like, um, I was like non-binary first, and then 
you know, it started transitioning fully to a woman. And that's like a, it, it feels totally different to me personally. It's like, you know, being somewhat genderless and then like taking on gender again in a different direction. It's very interesting, but not to distract from our, you know, larger conversation about the film, but yes. No, I mean, you're right, but it, it is um it is valuable uh conversation to have because I um I was kind of in that same boat where, you know, for most of my life I just kind of went along with, you know, oh yeah, I guess I'm just this, I'm just gonna live this way. Yeah. And I think it was probably twenty nineteen or so. It was twenty twenty because of a bunch of things and the whole COVID and a bunch of other elements that a lot of people actually <laughs> got their eggs cracked by around that time. COVID-19, the great egg cracker. Yeah, it really was that. The quarantine and being able to express gender in Animal Crossing during that quarantine, I was cooked. Yeah, chef ki- chef's kiss. Yeah, absolutely. At first, it was like, I just want to be androgynous at best. That was just like, that was it. I just don't... I just don't want to be perceived as a man. That was it. It was just like, I'm I'm fine with people not knowing how to perceive me. That's fine. And when I started on HRT, I started at a very low dose because I didn't want to like freak anybody out with any sudden changes. As if any changes would have happened suddenly anyway. Yeah, like <laughs> HRT is like such a <laughs> s- slow fucking changes. God, that's like, ugh, not to... Totally derail the conversation once again, but... You're good. uh, That's, like, the part of, like, my early transition that I'm in now, where it's, like, I feel like a lot of changes happen for me really fast, socially, Mm -hmm. um, and then some physically, but now it's just, like, I'm just waiting for... It's, like, I'm, you know, there's not much more I could do other than just wait for my biology to catch up, and I fucking hate it. It's awful, but... (laughs) Yeah, I've heard that it's pretty typical in trans people on HRT is that... You, you do kind of hit that plateau because when you start, there really is a, uh, a honeymoon phase, so to speak, of like, oh, my gosh, I finally made this change. I'm taking control. You know, yeah. I'm doing this for me. And you get really excited. Yeah. And there's like, uh, what's it called? Like the pink haze or something like that? I've heard it described that. Like exactly. That yes. Up. Thank you. I- I'm glad you remembered. I forgot the name of it. Because I don't know about for you. And, you know, I figure we can get as personal as we want on this pod. I mean. It's our show. Know. The first thing I noticed that was like, oh, shit, was the, um, was like slight breast development. Mm-hmm. And that started pretty early, but it was very little. Yeah. It was just enough to be like hey i'm here i'm working yeah and it was like oh shit okay and then there isn't much change <laughs> for a long time and it's just like oh shit okay <laughs> yeah ugh. and i i don't know like that's like the big thing for me now is like just waiting for like breast development i'm just like mm. you know it's like it takes so much time but um yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so you were saying that... Um, yeah, we're both baby trans and may not have, you know, a lot of information. And I don't want to speak for you, but for me, I, I guess I lose track of that, like, we've always been here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in, in traces of Mesopotamia, like, there have been records of transgender people. And it's not like I thought we were new, but just the language that you hear used in the trans community now, I was so blown away watching this film, and it's like, if you didn't, like, if this was filmed with better, like, modern technology a lot of it really hasn't aged poorly like it yeah. really feels like it could have been filmed last week it's wild yeah yeah like there's there's like some like subtle things like about like the video quality and things like that that definitely clock it as being from like the early 90s but like yeah. beyond that just like the way they talk and like the way these women look and things like that it's like they're from now you know what i mean and it's weird to like yeah. see and think about you know you mentioned earlier about like originally being turned on to this or seeing this on twitter 
Uh, and mm-hmm. I remember that that post going around uh, in our little like uh, trans Twitter circle and just like watching like some of the clips that are like, you know, a little more risque that were posted on there. Um, yeah. And just being blown away by uh, how like they looked like they were Twitter girls now. You know what I mean? I know. Yeah. Yeah. And just, like, yeah, the language they use, the things that they're talking about, the issues that they're experiencing. Um, I, You know, I, I, there's some things that are different, but I think a lot of the, the same things are happening and are still relevant, which is it, very interesting to, like, connect with the past like that. I wish there was more like this that, that for me, make me feel connected. Like you said, connected to the past. Like, it helps make you feel like... I don't know, like part of something bigger and just like a, you see the people who dealt with more or different things than we're dealing with today. Like, I will say it definitely feels like I'm watching this and I'm like hearing about like some of the exchanges they dealt with and like some of the scenes. And it definitely seems like it made me feel like I was born at the right time, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. I don't know if I would have been cut out for being trans in the early 90s. Like, that sounds really, really hard. Like, it's hard now, but goddamn, like, yeah, I can't imagine being trans without Twitter, honestly. Like, yeah. I was just talking to Nebula earlier, and just, like, the community I've been able to find on Twitter has just helped so much like i would feel so there are times i still feel isolated which you know without tiktok i don't know what i would uh, tiktok and twitter i don't know what i would do like without that connection to other trans people and hearing them talk about going through the same things so you don't feel alone yeah like like i can't imagine living in they're both living in canada here i don't know how big of a community they really have like um, we'll, we'll get to it. I took extensive notes, so I didn't. I didn't oh. want to miss anything. I didn't want to leave anything out. But N- note taken, moth is coming out. That's me. I got my. I, I got my handy dandy notebook. Hell yeah! But yeah, I mean, I I think that uh, th- that's definitely like something that's certainly changed that I I noticed about it as well, which was that like a big part of the modern trans experience is online spaces as well as mm. physical spaces where for these women, like the things that they're dealing with are all physical spaces. And I agree. Like they, they have so much like strength of personality. Like they're both like bad bitches for real. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Um, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Like I would never, I would never want to disagree with either of these women because I feel like they would just rip me a fucking new one, you know, and not in a fun way. They, no, they fucking been through some shit. They've seen some shit. They they would not hesitate to fucking put you in your goddamn place. And yeah, like you said, not in a fun way. <laughs> yeah. And like, I yeah. So and it's funny you said that, like, you don't feel like you necessarily would have been cut out for that. Like if you were born then. And I'm not sure either, because like I'm I'm a very soft girl, you know, I don't, yeah. I try not to like, I mean, I know I dick holes for a living, but you know, like emotionally, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um, I love praise and I hate adversity. <laughs> so yeah, adversity yeah. sucks y'all. <laughs> yeah. Adversity sucks. Being my stature also like tiny, it's really like, <laughs> yes, it's a double edged sword of like, I'm, I'm five foot and 116 pounds i'm very tiny i'm i'm not threatening on one hand but i could also be (laughs) beaten up very easily (laughs) if if it if it also went bad you know like yeah so it's scary (laughs) like i i'm not like i i need to um i need to weapon up more (laughs) than i am second amendment just saying yeah, yeah. You can have I know. a little tiny oh. cunt purse gun, and mm-hmm. then get. I, I don't know what the gun laws are and where where you are, but you know I'm a Texas girl, so. 
I mean, I don't yeah. think. Well, yeah. I mean, Texas is. Yeah, that's yeah. That I is can a totally carry a gun animal. in my ass and then pull it out and gun someone down for insulting me and get away scotch free. Well, I don't know if I. I'm trans, so they would probably hate me anyway. But you know. Hmm. <laughs> I, I think we're still technically a swing state, but I mean, oh, yeah, I think that's just yeah. in label. Yeah. Like we might as well be a red state at this fucking yeah. point. I mean, it is Dixie. You know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, yeah. There really isn't much safe haven in the South, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So the film opens up as an introduction. We are two gender queers, gender outlaws, trans dykes, gender troublemakers who don't look like, I, I don't know if it's Tula or Tulla, but referring to the transgender model and uh, Bond girl, James Bond girl. Mm. I believe she's still with us and is a uh, an activist for trans rights and everything. But hell yeah, yeah, like yeah, like we don't look like this fucking picturesque swimsuit model Bond, you know, blonde bombshell, which is debatable. I I, I, I they're think they're really, both they're very both hot, really hot. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're so hot. <laughs> We made this video spontaneously to make our bodies, our sexualities, our lives more visible to other communities as well as our own. Because transsexuals' backgrounds are all unique, this video does not pretend to be a universal statement for transsexuals' experience or issues. We have our own culture, language, stories, and this is the time for us, and only us, to document ourselves. I almost made this the intro to the pod, because this is our mission statement, too. <laughs> like, yeah. That, because, like, I think in the first episode when we were talking about our, our upbringings and everything and what what brought us here, I said something very similar of, like, if you're listening to us and you're hearing our stories and they sound very similar to yours, like, that's cool and everything, but everyone's story is different. And don't feel like, you know, just because you didn't have the exact same story as either of us, that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong, you know? yeah. No, 100%. Um, one of the things that makes me think about is, um, this was a couple weeks back, but uh, do you know Casey Pritchard on Twitter? Online trans girl, uh, pretty, pretty good following. Um, she also does a lot of discourse posting, which I tend to not interact with anymore, as I've kind of alluded to uh, before on the pod. But um, she had a tweet about something recently where it was like, you know, a lot of uh, trans women talk about how, like, you know, they were always women or they always felt like they were women or like, you know, they, they've always been androgynous or things like that. And she she was just like, I wasn't. I am not, you know? I mean, and right. it, if you look at like pre-transition photos of her, she was very masculine, you know? Um, and it's like she understands herself as being like, I was a man and now I am a woman. Um, and I kind of relate to that more than a lot of other experiences but that's that's the point right is that like people have very divergent experiences but it doesn't mean you're not part of the community just because you might hear someone on twitter or tiktok or whatever platform say like this is my experience or something like that you know yeah you're totally right i i relate to that in a way like i like the more i think back to my like childhood and everything like i can pinpoint uh, certain times I may have felt uh, dysphoria and didn't know what it was. Yeah. But I don't think I was always a woman. We're so worried about presentation and we're so worried about what we say um, potentially being used against us by people who can be like, oh, look, like like people who say there's like trendsters, like they're, they said they used to be a man. They, they weren't always a man. Like, I'm of the belief that I don't give a fuck what your story is. I don't care when you decided, what you decided. Nebula and I were talking about this. Like, people say, you can't choose to be trans. I don't give a fuck if you think you did. Yeah. If that's what works for you, if that's what you think is your situation like wh who am i to tell you that's invalid like we were talking yeah. about people who like oh you know people are taking hormones to transition for fun they're doing it for a fetish i don't fucking care 
why would I give a shit if people are like, if it's are making them happy, why would <laughs> yeah. I shit on them for it? Like, yeah, exactly. It's like if if they're happier, then it's working for them, and yeah, that's enough. Live your fucking truth, regardless. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, yeah no, I, I totally agree. People will be afraid that people like are we- are going to weaponize that, but look, folks. If you're one of these people that are so worried about being one of the good ones, they hate all of us. Yeah, there's no good <laughs> ones. Like, <laughs> No matter yeah. what we say, they are going to find ways to hate us anyway. It doesn't yeah. matter if we say the wrong thing. They're not going to like us anyway. So maybe, maybe don't worry about that one thing. Maybe... Maybe knock that one thing off of all the things we have to worry about. And maybe just focus on the more important shit. (laughs) Maybe. Yeah. There's one thing that I wanted to talk about about the intro, which is that I I was, like, pretty surprised by the the term genderqueer uh, being used in the beginning part. Because, like, my understanding of the word's usage now is it tends to be more associated with, like, non-binary um, identities, which is not to mm. say that, like, those are completely distinct from trans-feminine identities. I mean, we're both of us are non-binary, of course. But, mm-hmm. um, like, genderqueer, in at least my estimation of how people use it and how people claim it and what it means to them is that it tends to be more of, a, like, an agender, almost, um, identity, yeah. or at least, like... Um, describes more of the middle section of the gender spectrum. So from that just straight up text on a plain background, the first shot we see is Jean Bay naked on top of Xanthra Phillips, uh, French kissing her on the bed. And it then fades to uh, Jean explaining that she's been looking a long time for another transsexual I'm just going to use their verbiage here. And I know people hate the phrase transsexual. Again, I don't care. I don't know. It's coming back. It's it coming sure back. Is. Yeah. I have no hard feelings about that phrase. So I'm just going to use it here. I don't I don't care. Yeah, it's a word. Uh, uh, looking for a long time for another transsexual to be intimate with, uh, to understand her body and how and where she, quote, wants it. Uh, Xanthra says that being attracted to transsexuals is its own orientation because, quote, so many straight men are attracted to us. I thought this was so fascinating, this part. Yeah, very interesting take because, like, that's very much not where the discourse is now. Like, I think Definitely the dominant not. view... Yeah, the dominant view is just that, like, no, like, straight women are attracted, attracted to trans women. Not all of them, but plenty of them are, and it doesn't... It's not a separate thing, you know? Yeah. But also, it, it like, I think it kind of makes sense in the framework of that time. Yeah. Um, where, like, all kinds of queerness were a lot more pushed under the rug, you know? Mm-hmm. Where, like, we've experienced, like, a very significant gay liberation. I mean, obviously, there's plenty more work to be done. We're not even close to being finished. But, you know, they're, they're like... There's been many leaps in, you know, uh, gay acceptance and trans acceptance, too, um, but especially, like, for, um, like, gay men and women, um, things have improved significantly since the 90s. So it made me think that, like, you know, it's it's a, not that I necessarily agree or n- think that, like, she's right about that. I think there's some, it's something to be said about the state of queerness at the time, where it's, like, even an attraction to... Uh, trans people has its own like uh, vibe of queerness attached to it, uh, rightly or wrongly, you know? I know it also could be from personal experience, and we'll get to it later, but like, uh, Xanthor doesn't exactly have the best history with men anyway, so yeah. that could have potentially uh, shaped her viewpoint on that, and I don't know if they both share that viewpoint. They really do a pretty good job of making it like this person's talking now this person's talking very very rarely in the film do they kind of overlap and there's only a few points in the movie where the person behind the camera like asks questions or like interacts with the person on camera either just to like maybe get a clarification on something but yeah they do a really good job of just documenting each other they would have loved tiktok (laughs) 
They, yeah, they absolutely would have. <laughs> I don't know if they would have known how to use it offhand, but, you know, just looking at the community for sure. Like, I was yeah. just talking to somebody earlier, and again, not to get on too much of a another tangent here, a couple of the girlies, actually all of the girlies I've been talking to at work, four cishet married women, who I think are all younger than me, uh, I've befriended, and... Uh, they all kind of read these uh, different smut books. And it was like, oh, that's interesting that y'all would, A, tell me that, because, like, we don't really talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah. I um, just kind of tried to look into some, because I want to look into some sapphic trans specifically, but the more I realize the things I want, in a book the the specifications make the search narrower and narrower that i'm gonna find like maybe a couple books like i want Real. i want a trans main character i want it to be woman loving women i want the art the author to be trans so it's an authentic personality and i want the book to be super fucking smutty and spicy like don't pull any goddamn punches i want it to be graphic and it's Hell like yeah. i don't know if you're gonna find that girl <laughs> like that yeah. is really specific yeah don't stop looking though it's no absolutely there. not and i will tell you if i find anything <laughs> And yeah, we'll probably talk do. about it on the pod. <laughs> yeah, dr- drop the link in bio for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I was talking to the one girl, and she said, um, yeah, I've, I found a lot. Like, I've learned so much about it on TikTok. And I was like, girl, I learned I was trans and on the spectrum thanks to TikTok. Like, that opened yeah. up so many goddamn doors to me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, online spaces are so helpful for, like, people that are marginalized either like because of their identity or because of their neurotype, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Where, you know, it's funny that like both of these women are like, they were like posting before there was a place to post. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were like zines and this film and everything else. Like, damn, they would have fucking gone off on, I would have followed that Twitter so quick. I would have been a yeah. longtime follower of them before transition to, you know. Oh yeah, th- that would have been one of the earliest signs. <laughs> yeah. I love their dedication to giving back to the community and I think that's really really important and a main reason why we're doing this show in the first place yeah. is um like like we've said it before I'll say it again like I'm sure we have people listening that aren't trans, and I hope y'all are learning about the community and about trans experiences by listening to the show, but if there are trans listeners, I hope that you have a feeling of community and that your existence is further validated by what we talk about here. We love you, and we're glad you're listening. The the fact that, like, this film, to, to take it back to the film for a sec, mm-hmm. uh, it's, like, constantly, like, cutting between these, like, graphic images of the two women who are talking fucking. Yeah. It's so based. I love it. It's yeah. so good. We'll get to my favorite scene in the whole okay. movie here in a little bit. I think um, I might know what it is. It's so cute. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um... The the, ne- the next slide here uh, says, Gender described women spelled W-O-M-Y-N or man are much more appropriate phrases than transsexual for people outside our community to be used only when absolutely necessary to distinguish us and genetics, i.e., non-transsexuals the way they just refer to cis women as genetic women throughout this i don't know it sounds super sci-fi when they say it 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 does but i you know i've been thinking about it all day while digging my holes and i was sure. like i like it way better than biological women like it's so oh, yeah. much better than biological women because it's more accurate and it's more descriptive mm-hmm I still prefer just saying cis women because it, I, I feel like keeping it keeping it focused on like you know human agency as opposed to like some kind of you know immutable biological world which doesn't even exist right 
Yeah. Um, genetic is still so much better than biological, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. The next scene is the first clip of the movie that I saw being shared on Twitter. And immediately I was like, oh, we, we need to talk about this. Xanthra talks about an interaction with a gay man at a club. The man calls her Miss, and she insists on being called Ms. The man condescends by arguing with her and then asks, how about princess? She explains that she is transsexual and this is a matter of life and death. I wasn't quite sure, so I googled, and this is just what my interpretation of this is. Miss is the form used for girls, typically, and Ms. is typically used for adult women. If I had to speculate, this comes down to, like, just being kind of talked down to. She wants to be referred to as an adult because she is an adult, and by using... Uh, miss, it's infantilizing. Exactly. It's it's like calling out uh, trans misogyny very specifically. Like, you know, it's not enough to just see her as a woman, like, or, or you know, as a feminine girl. Like, mm -hmm. you must see her as a woman, like a full adult, fully capable, you know what I mean? Yes. Not a child. Um, and... Yeah, so, so ahead of her time. Oh, my God. And yeah, and like, I, I just loved it. it. It also ties into like the the women with the why thing. Um, I really appreciated how it was like very steeped in like mainstream feminism. Kind of a shame because I, I feel like sometimes like uh, mainstream feminism and uh, trans women are kind of at odds. But I've also seen mm -hmm. a lot of like uh, push to like kind of reunite trans women with feminism and also like feminism with trans women too um that it's it's yeah. like not all turfs who are like kind of fucking it up for everyone you know like <laughs> yeah uh, feminist concepts are very important for us as women um mm -hmm. yeah that was really based like uh, <laughs> call him out sis she calls him a damn fucking pig asshole fag and goes on to describe the hypocrisy she notices with gay men who will stand up for themselves but let transsexuals fend for themselves while, quote, being very creepy. I wanted to yeah. quote this specifically because of how the film ends and comments I saw on the video on Twitter. Fast forwarding to the very last scene in the movie... Xanthra talks about how she first heard other transsexuals talking negatively about gay people and how it bothered her at first, but she soon understood. She said, I was very bought into the gotta fight homophobia wherever, but that it's not homophobia. It's a response to a very horrible, gender suppressive and oppressive behavior coming from gay men. It's very overt very deliberate and very very awful and she just like sighs and lays her head against the wall and she's just, she just looks so bummed and it's like Weary. that's how you end the movie i was like god damn that sucks but yeah. the reason i wanted to quote it specifically because she just now at the end is saying this is a response this is not homophobia you fucking look at the comments on the clip it is just gay people clutching their goddamn pearls, saying, oh, homophobia in the trans community is nothing new. Ugh. It's like, can y'all please get yeah. your fucking heads out of your fucking asses for two seconds and listen yeah. to us for fuck's sake? Yeah, like, you know, I... It's so dismissive. There, there's so much to say about it. It's, it's very dismissive. Yeah, I definitely relate to what like Xanther was saying about that, where um, I see a lot of like uh, gay men, and I've also like worked with some like uh, rich white gay men. Oh wow! Um, who have been kind of demons. <laughs> um, they got their bag. They got, especially now, right? They 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 got the thing they wanted, which was to be able to marry and like yeah. general, more general acceptance. And now they're just like they sort of become the oppressor, right? Yeah. 
but at the same time, like, I also relate to, like, the earlier part of what she was saying where it's, like, she recognizes that she's in a boat with these people and the boat mm-hmm. has holes in it and they're both of them are in the boat. You know what I mean? Where it's, like, um, the outside world sees, like, trans people and gay people as being kind of the same thing. Kind of, like, this abhorrent, like, uh, degenerate like um thing that must be eradicated or suppressed Mm -hmm. uh and you'd hope there would be solidarity and in most cases there are i i would say like you know yeah in most cases there are but there are also just some like gay people who are privileged in many other ways and can be like very like overt with that sort of gendered like oppression you know, I completely agree with what she was saying. Jean talks about how well she passes in the current day compared to when she first came out and how people, quote, cannot laugh at her anymore because of her makeup, ugly dresses, or bad wigs, but they still can. Xanthra points out Jean saying there's something going on with her, and Jean clarifies that it wasn't a mistake and that some people do see us as a something. There was a lot in this clip. Yeah, that was a big moment. <laughs> yeah, um, it definitely struck a chord with me as someone who still feels like they kind of rely on makeup and wigs. That, like, I see someone on the other end of it and just, like, very much envious of where she is in her current stage. But, yeah. but she's right that they they can't laugh at her, but they still will because people will find ways to be awful. Oh, yeah. And, like, that's been my experience on Twitter and just how, like, I'd mentioned this before, like, someone out in the open, like, a, a stranger on the street who doesn't know me from anyone else, them misgendering me, that hurts because that to me says that the effort I've put into my transition um, isn't enough, that I still don't pass well enough, and that typically sends me into a fucking dysphoria, depression spiral. Um, But when it's Steve44792153 leaving a comment on a picture of me looking fucking gorgeous in a goddamn look I spent like an hour on in a a hot outfit. And you're gorgeous. Vouch. (laughs) I know you're full of shit. Like, that doesn't hurt me because I know what you're doing. Like, you're just trying to fucking rain on my parade and that's not going to work. Yeah. Because, like, you fucking know what I am. You know who I am. And you're just trying to be a dick. Like, that does that has no effect on me. Yeah, it's it's so intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, like, uh, that was something I learned really quick about being, like, trans online, which is that they'll find anything, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, where, like, at first I was like, oh, okay, well, they said this, so I should focus some energy on this. And that actually was kind of, like, in a, in a kind of perverse way, it was sort of a... Uh, interesting way to guide my attention and focus for a while. Mm. Like, you know, people would be, like, ripping into a selfie of mine and they'd be like, oh, like, the eyebrows are terrible. So I'd be like, okay. And then I would, like, focus on my eyebrows a little bit more and I'm still working on that. But, um, you know, I remember one person very distinctly being like, yeah, you're, like, uh, your lip line is all fucked up and gross and you're like so masculine or whatever. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got really good at putting my lipstick on. <laughs> and then like pretty quickly I started being like, oh, like no matter what it is, they'll just move on to the next thing. And the fact, and sometimes I take it like a sort of a, a compliment because I'm like, oh, they didn't say this other thing um, because that means I've improved. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'll, they'll just find anything, you know, because it's not about the goalpost yeah exactly it's it's not about um and then you know once your makeup is looking fire they'll be like oh well you're wearing all this makeup like you know women don't always wear a ton of makeup all the time and it's like uh fuck you you know there's no way to win yeah. you know it's because it's not a game like the second you even start playing the game you've lost you know exactly yeah it's just it's more important to be yourself 
Yeah, just don't Be interact. Happy. Fucking block. Ignore and block. Like, yeah. there's no point in interacting with these people, and I don't care if they think they've won because they see I block them. Like, if that's your fucking 100%. life... If that's your existence, yeah. yeah, to just go online and shit on people for being happy and then, like, celebrating when they've blocked you, what even are you doing with yourself? Yeah, they're wasting time. But I don't care, and I can't see them uh, whinge about it because I've blocked and hidden their reply. So... Yeah, too bad. Um, yeah, but no, I... Oh God, it's been so, like, good for me to do that because I used to fight with people so much on Twitter... Um, about a lot of things like you know that's one reason why I don't discourse post too is that like I don't want to fight with people but like I especially don't want to fight with like transphobes like because they're not there to have a conversation they're not there to learn they're there to oppress um, so whenever and look I don't talk about this I don't really mention this very often but I get a lot of hate on my posts and I spend sometimes a significant amount of time just like looking at my posts, making sure there aren't hateful replies. And if I see one, hiding it and blocking the person immediately and not interacting. And, yeah. you know, sometimes I even see like followers of mine, like uh, jump in the replies and like defend me. And uh -huh. while I find that very sweet, um, I don't want to give those people any oxygen. I just no. want them to to uh you know the second they open their mouth i open up an airlock and space them you know <laughs> yeah exactly they're done you know yeah um and i find that way more pr productive because my goal is like we you were talking about about this podcast earlier my goal is to make community mm -hmm. um and to uh talk to other trans people and other queer people and not to fight with John bunch of numbers. Fuck that guy. He's he's not even creative enough to come up with a fucking username, okay? Yeah, he just created this account just to do this. Like, that's his whole fucking existence. It's sad. Yeah. And yeah, yeah it's not exactly. worth my time. I'll fucking post a picture, and I'll say this about, like, if a, if a, if a post does really well. And Twitter is usually pretty good about hiding shitty comments under the, like, you might not want to read these little yeah. button, you know? Sometimes um, it has really good comments under there, though. Like, sometimes it's, like, uh, a mutual being, like, you're so hot, blah, and I'm like, oh, yes. But <laughs> exactly, a lot of times like, it's, whoa, yeah. why are you trying to keep that from me, bitch? I want to read that. No horniness on Twitter.com. <sighs> <laughs> Let them be horny, you cowards. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, like... After, like, a day of feeling really good about a picture and getting lots of love, I'll see someone, like, post a meme and just be like, oh, what the fuck is this doing here? Block, hide, like... And, like, yeah. what do you think you're even doing? Like, clearly, like, you're one out of, like, 50 people here being, like, cool and supportive. You're, like, the one person being a fucking dick. Like, yeah, why and it's do so, you think... Oh, my God. Yeah, go ahead. Why do you think that would bring me down? <laughs> like, that's not yeah, how this shit works, dude. Oh, no. Yeah. This rando thinks I'm ugly. What? Why the fuck would I give a shit? Exactly. And you have to... Sc the, the funniest part to me is that in order to even see it, you have to scroll through, like, 20 people being like, you're gorgeous, you're amazing, and then this one person being like, Ugh, bleh, and you're like... It's funny to me, honestly. It's, it's hilarious yeah. how, like... Somebody sees a good photo of a beautiful woman and is like, oh, this person's trans. I'm going to fuck with them, you know? And, like, they have to open the replies to reply, right? They have to see all these other people being like, wow, you're so beautiful. And then say their own shitty thing and fuck them. Space them immediately. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah, it's it's such a waste of time. If anything, I'm mad that you're wasting my time. And it's like, why <laughs> did I even have to read that? That's stupid. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I love when they, they show themselves because then I block them. And then I never have to see them again. And I'm not trying to invalidate people who do get offended or do feel really bad about these hate comments. Like, that's fair. Like, you know, th these things might offend or um, affect you in a negative way. I'm just saying they don't... They're just gonna roll off my back. That's just us. That's just us, though. Well, I, I also think, you know, I, I do want to take a second to stop and be like... 
in the same breath, I think we are very privileged that like many people find us attractive. Yeah. Um, because then we we have the positive comments that we can scroll through. Where I feel like sometimes you know some other women might not have the same support network. Um, and then seeing like that as like maybe the only or one of only a few messages or re- replies that could be very hard, you know? Yeah. Um, I, yeah. But yeah, uh, beyond that, um, I, I also found it very interesting how, um, uh, was it John or, or Xanther? Oh yeah, it was, it was John, um, said that like she intentionally said that like, you know, were things to some people. And we've talked about that a lot on this podcast about like the idea of like girl flesh or like, you know, that, you know, trans women are sometimes like pretty objects um, or, or exotic objects, but not exactly people, you know? I mean, she said it before I was even born, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Right. Oh, that that fucking trips me out. I keep forgetting the age difference anyway. (laughs) Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm 29. My ber- my birthday falls in uh, 1994. So this 94. was made shortly oh before God. I was born. Yeah. Ah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like too much of a skeleton. That's fine. <laughs> no, babe, you're you're fine. Thank you. I know. I'm I'm totally just joking. <laughs> yeah. Good. I was fucking like watching wrestling and Power Rangers while you, before yeah. you were born. <laughs> Hell yeah, you were. <laughs> that means you got to experience so much cool stuff. You're probably into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was. That's right. Yeah, I missed it. I was like uh, too old or too young. It was too old for me. So I missed it. So people are talking about like, oh, well, I'm more of a Donatello. And I'm like, I have no fuck. Is that the one with the nunchuck- nunchucks? I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you. I, I, I did look, kind of lose focus on the on the Ninja Turtles after I was like, Six. What were you into <laughs> w- when you were a kid, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, God. Um, I did like the Power Rangers. Okay. Um, Which one? Uh, so there was like a movie that came out. Yeah. I would mm-hmm. watch it over and over again. And I don't remember what it was called, but I remember that. With the oh, skydiving? Yeah, with the skydiving, yes. Hell okay. yeah. And there was like a whole thing with like goo and stuff. And I was like, oh, like this villain's gonna goo the world or whatever. There like, was lots of goo, you're right. Lots of goo. Um, I have an ooze, I believe. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I was also really into like, um, when I was younger, I was really into like dinosaurs and like animal stories and and uh, specifically like love stories too. I was like really, really into them as a young child. Yeah. Um, huh. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, I also like, I, I also like some kind of like stereotypical male things too. Like I was really into like James Bond for a long time. Really? Um, and that's, yeah. And that's one reason why I really enjoy the podcast Kill James Bond. Oh yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. Um, because it's like uh, three like trans people, two of them like explicitly trans feminine. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure about the third, the third one. Mm. I know like they're like gender queer. Um, of some kind, but um, they talk about all of the James Bond movies from a trans feminine perspective and a feminist perspective, and I love it because it's like everyone's situations are different, and some of the things I liked as a child were like stereotypically masculine things, and when I think about that, it's sometimes hard to reconcile, but um, yeah, that was very helpful for me, like that podcast of just being like, nope, you're not the only one. Like, that's a common experience. Maybe not for everyone, but for plenty of people, plenty of women, you know? I never watched a James Bond movie, but I do want to check out the pod because it's trans people talking about it. Like, that's interesting yeah. to me. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, it really is. I Yeah, it's one of those things It's hard to recommend, you know, because you have to, to really get the most out of, like... That podcast, you have to watch the movies. Yeah. Which means you have to watch the movies. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. Yeah. Um, but it's good. I would recommend it to anyone. I know it's A, very late for me, but it's fine. And also, like, we have a whole movie to talk about, but maybe it's... <laughs> true. M- maybe it's worth a, a discussion sometime about... Like, more, more, more about... Um, 
what we uh, took in as children and how that affected us. Like, you with the James Bond movies, and um, I was obsessed with wrestling, and there's no shortage of sexism, homophobia, uh, slurs being thrown around. And yeah. this was, like, when it was, like, the most popular shit in the world. Like, yeah, I see Dwayne Johnson, fucking millionaire, you know, borderline billionaire action star. Everybody fucking loves him. You see him on TV just throwing the R slur around. Like, it's nothing. And he's yeah. the good guy. Like, yeah. it's like, what the fuck am I looking at here? And South Park was the same. I fucking loved South Park when I was a kid. Now it's like, no wonder it took me so fucking long to, like, feel, like, comfortable because so much of, like, the stuff I absorbed was so fucking hateful and bigoted. Yeah, and a lot of that stuff was from the time this movie was made, which is, like, yeah, again, true. Like we, were, we were talking about, like, these, the two women in this film are bad bitches. Like... Mm. They were existed in that time where, like, you know, homophobia was so rampant, just like by itself, and like, transness was like, you know, this like, you know, freakish thing and the fringes of society. You know what I mean? But they're just like, full throatedly, like, yes, I'm a transsexual woman, and this is like what makes me happy, and they're, you know pushing out into the world smut of them like fucking and it's beautiful <laughs> you know they're bad you, bitches you reminded me around being like saying around the time this this film came out um we were watching uh nebula and i were recently watching a uh commercial compilation on youtube because you oh, know yeah. that's, that's just the, what that's, we that's do the thing yeah that's the thing to do in this household and yeah. riff comms uh, check it out on youtube uh it's very Ooh, good thank you <laughs> yeah. um and uh it was a commercial block um from fox in the early 90s which is already like uh-oh and <laughs> there was yeah. there was a show that ran for one season so 13 episodes called uh ask harriet and the whole plot of this show was a sexist sports journalist gets fired from his job so he masquerades as a woman to try to get like a job back but like it's already taken so he like becomes like a like a self-help like advice columnist radio host like Frasier but He's oh a woman God. named Harriet or something. Wow. And the whole show is, look at this burly dude dressed like a woman. Ain't that funny? Like, yeah. that, for the whole show, that's the one joke. And yeah. then that, at the same time, they fucking put this goddamn film out. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, exactly. And, like, that, that's that been, like, a, a, a thing with, like, so much, like, uh, trans femme representation where, like, a lot of it that you see in media is, like, a trick, you know? Like, right. a, a, a famous, more wholesome example is, like, Mrs. Doubtfire, you know, is, like, this True. guy. Yep. And it's a trick. He is playing a trick. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, like, another example would be, like, Ace Ventura from around the same time, Oof. you know, early 90s, yeah. where it's like mm -hmm. uh, this woman is like hiding a murder she did with her transness. And, you know, the idea of being intimate with her is so disgusting that it like, you know, makes people like spit and vomit. And that's the joke, you know, not to just pile everything on, but uh, Silence of the Lambs, also from this time, like Buffalo Bill was is like, you know, a horrible like transphobic stereotype and actually you know i'll tell you a private story um and you know th this maybe this could go in the pot or not i'll leave it up to you um oh okay but like i was like you know in the crew truck we were going to a site last week and um the person who was driving was like playing a song or something and it was like about Buffalo Bill. And I was like, um, 
can I skip this song? And they were like, yeah, sure, no worries. Like, why? Is it just, like, too dark, too grim or whatever? And I was like, no, uh, I just don't really fuck with Buffalo Bill anything, you know? And then they kind of sat back for a second, and they were like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like, it just never occurred to them that it was, like, horribly transphobic, (laughs) you know? Yeah, that's fucking nuts. Yeah, you just don't even think about it. Like, oh, I didn't even think about it. Like, what? How could you yeah. not? How could this be lost on you? That's so fucked. I'm so sorry that happened. I it's it was it really was not a big deal, you know. Um, it was just like uh, a moment that's like fairly illustrative of like cis people's understanding of trans feminine representation and like trans misogyny and how like rampant it is in our society, you know. Yeah, because like I mean, I definitely get like in my darker moments, I fucking think about that shit, like like buffalo bill and all that shit like yeah i can't help but 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 flash back to that because you know that was some of the earliest representation i'd seen which is why um i put a movie in the in the queue list that we'll um eventually get to hopefully that is uh slightly better we'll 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 talk about it but it was okay. like it was like genuinely like the first time I seen a sympathetic trans character and was like, it was one of those moments where like something, um, like a mystery door in my brain was opened and I for years didn't make that connection as to what it was. Like, it was really one of those like put a fucking uh, sticky note on this. Like, this is important. Yeah. You're going to remember this later. And it's like, huh? Well, why do I connect to this movie so much? That's interesting. Well, why why would that be? <laughs> well, Moth, it's just because you're such an empathetic person. You know, you just love hearing about the experiences of all kinds of people. That and for true. some reason, you're, right. you're just watching a lot of trans feminine ones, you know? Still cis, though. Yeah. What is the... Yeah, there's, <laughs> some, there's some connection here. I just yeah. can't put my finger on... Hmm. I'll figure it out <laughs> in 10 plus years. Anyway. Yeah, real... Real. Okay. Back um, to the film. <laughs> now we kind of move on to a different section here where uh, Jean is talking about how gay men uh, used to not be into her before she came out because she was too feminine for them. She continues that gay men acknowledge her now, feel up on her, and kiss her because it's trendy and feeds into their, as she puts it, fetishism of straight sex by showing their friends getting along with, quote, something that looks like a woman. Like, haha, it's so funny. I'm gay, yeah. right, guys? But look, I'm like making out with this, quote, quote, woman, elbow, elbow, wink, wink. And right. it's like, I can't even imagine putting up with that for more than a second without fucking flipping the fuck out. Like, are you fucking yeah. kidding me? What is going on here? This is so fucked up. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's tough sometimes. Like, um, I I know a lot of gay men. Like in my life, a lot of them are my really good friends, and some of them have been like super sweet to me um, since coming out and things like that. Um, some of them were like very clearly into me beforehand, and a lot of you know some of them are like kind of bummed. But like you know, uh, get fucked, sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> not my fucking problem, dude. Yeah, I do feel like that is a thing in um in queer spaces that are not exclusively trans, where it feels like you know this acceptance and sometimes like uh, showing off the acceptance by like sort of like fetishizing or like objectifying trans women is mm. like fairly you know common still. And I think one of the issues is that it's like seen as like this progressive thing to do where like people don't actually think about it any further. Right. Where it's like, you know, they'll be like misogynistic to a trans woman, but it's like, they're being progressive because they're seeing her as a woman, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, I, I had girl, I had a situation like that happen recently where like, no, these two bitches at a party were like being super misogynistic to me, but it was like, one, they were they were doing that, and it was like they were being kind of hurtful, and uh, it was misogynistic, and like everyone was laughing because it was like, oh, that's like so funny and interesting, you know. So it was oh. just like, oh, <laughs> so much to unpack there. But anyway, <laughs> Jesus, I'm, again, I'm I'm so sorry that 
Ugh. Oh, it's it's fine. You know. <sighs> um I know, I know. The people mean well, they're just they're just dummies, you know? That's true. They just don't know any better. Yeah. They ought to. And it's not really much of an excuse, but <laughs> they ought to, yeah. I, I think we've kind of realized that for better or worse, we just kind of have to pick our battles. Like, is this worth it? Eh, I don't know. Maybe like yes. the overt bigot is well is more worth my time than just some person at a party, you know? Yeah, subtle bigotry is uh, lower on the docket for sure. Xanthra piggybacks Jean's talking points and insinuated that these men are not so cleverly clocking her with backhanded compliments. She asks Jean if she thinks they are putting her down when they compliment her. I think this is something a lot of us deal with, is the, if a stranger in a store or something, someone like comes up to you and asks if you need help, and like, if they compliment you or something, that your mind immediately goes to they're clocking me, they're kind of being patronizing by saying this. Or at least I've had something similar like this. Like, I can't yeah. help feel that, at least early, earlier on. Maybe not so much anymore. But where it's just like, yeah, you're just saying that because you know I'm trans and you think that's what I want to hear, but... You know, and it's just like, t- like they might genuinely be like, no, like, I just thought you looked good today. Like, but in your mind, like, because at least for me, like, I have so much fucking self-doubt and shit to unpack that, like, is like, no, that can't be true. Like, you can't be thinking that legitimately. Like, that shit sucks. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah, I I have things to say about that where, like, I mean, especially, like, you know, I, I've talked a little bit about starting a new job and, like, talking with people at the new job, and sometimes I get the sense that it's, like, they, you know, accept me, but, like, they they have not internally accepted me, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they use she, her pronouns, they, mm-hmm. like, talk about me like a woman, but I'm not one of the girls at work you know what i mean and sometimes it's subtle (sighs) and also sometimes i'll fully admit is completely in my own mind it's completely like you know i'll have a sense that that's the case and then something else will happen that proves that it's not or maybe proves that it's not happening all the time but it's definitely like an insecurity that we feel a lot whether it's happening or not this is how i'm gonna be an ally by just kind of complimenting you and because i think that's what you need right now and it's just like no i mean honestly i just kind of like to be left alone <laughs> for yeah, the most like part. i'm a normal girl like that's it yeah you know? m- maybe don't bring attention to me thank you yeah i'm just kind of trying to stealth my way through the store when i was looking through books i was uh potentially wanting to read um th- this one sounded too political so i don't know i think i just kind of want fun rom com kind of books but it was called Her Majesty's Royal Coven and it's about a group of witches that work for the royal family and the story is about a trans woman and like well, we've never had a trans witch in the coven before so it really does kind of speak to like the one of the girls things that you were just talking about of like yeah, I desperately want that you know yeah, like especially 100%. with the, especially with the uh, group with the uh, friend group at at work, like I would love nothing more than just like, if a couple of them are talking and just like, like to like to call me over or something like God, like please, that'd be the most fucking validating shit. Like I'd probably cry. We well, should be one of the girls, Moth. Thank but you. Just, I appreciate yeah, that, and, and you definitely should too. Thank you. We'll get there. Um, I think someone, um, uh, I don't remember who posted it, but someone posted something like maybe the last month or so that was like something that's kind of heartbreaking about like being trans that you kind of learn quickly is that like you want to just like go to like female spaces and be in them as a woman. But one thing that you kind of have to do as a trans 
like woman is sort of be on the outside of all gendered space until you're invited into a uh, like female only space, which is unfortunate. Yeah, it really is just you don't belong in either one now. Right. Yeah. Uh, not Oof. automatically. You know, it's not like a uh, automatic comfortable acceptance. It's I, something I definitely that's a little that. more yeah um, contested. Let's forget about all that for a second. <laughs> because we've got to the best part of the movie. Here it is, folks. Yes. This is the this. other clip I saw on Twitter, and it made me laugh so much, and I love it, and it's so adorable. Can I just say this? Hmm. I wish more trans porn was like this. Yes. Real. Because this, this one scene, it's the only scene of the two of them in bed like with sound because other ones you just like you don't hear anything but here they're just kind of making out and they're laughing and it's so cute and pure and at one point uh jean pulls away for a second but uh xanthra pulls her back in and whispers in her ear something and jean goes what's that and and reaches down between Xanthra's legs and just starts laughing really hard, looks directly into the directly into the camera and says, She's got a heart on! And they are fucking laughing so hard. And she goes, Is it like, is it real? And she pulls her pants down, and you see her dick, and uh -huh. Jean's reaction, she just lets out this like what? scream it's so fucking cute and she just it's looks so at the cute. camera and says she hasn't been able to get a heart on in a while and xanthra is like not even able to speak she's like so elated and yeah. john just goes are you happy and she just looks so fucking happy and john yeah. just goes like let's celebrate it's i'm i'm welling up <laughs> yeah it, it's so it's fucking beautiful. cute it's so cute and like, oh, <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay to cry. It is beautiful, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And it, it really kind of ties into that. something, yeah, like something they talk about later in the film is like the idea that like, or earlier in the film, I don't remember, um, about how like uh, being like with another trans person is like really like special, you know? Right, yeah, they talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's um, like towards and, the end. Yeah. And I can absolutely relate to that because I'm like I'm like T for T all the way, you know. Like if I'm if I'm going to yeah. be into anyone new, they're going to be a trans person. All the people mm -hmm. I'm dating right now are trans, and like that's it for me, you know. Um, yeah. Like uh. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Like my husband is is like the most accepting, loving person. Um, and yeah, like the other other two people I'm involved with are trans women and. It's it's magic, you know? It feels really good to be yeah. with other trans people. Uh, people who see you and understand you, you know? And it can be um, silly about, like, parts of your body and it's not objectifying. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have no time for cis people anymore. Like, absolutely none. Sorry! It's, it's very funny. Um, I, I had heard when people say... Um, before I started progesterone, people were kind of joking about like, oh, you know, progesterone tends to like, it might make you lean more towards um, men, like be interested in men. Yeah. And for a long time, I'd considered myself pansexual. And it's very funny because like not, not long after I started progesterone, I lost all interest in men. Like... Yeah, one hundred percent. Like I just, I could never uh, see myself being involved sexually with a man again, and 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 genuinely, 
I couldn't really see myself being intimate with a cis woman either. Like, I can honestly say, um, before my uh, relationship with Nebula, I don't think I ever really had a positive sexual relationship with a girlfriend, no matter how long we were together. Wow. It was, it yeah, it just never really clicked. There was just a lot of times, and, you know, sorry, everyone, we're about to get personal for a second, um, where I just couldn't finish. Yeah. No matter how long we would try to go at it, it was like, no, this this isn't going to work. And yeah. being in I your 20s... I used to fake it a lot. I'm with you. I used to <gasps> fake it all the time. Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, my gosh. No, I never thought to do that. <laughs> No, yep. I, I, was, I, just, I just sat there super embarrassed and feeling bad. And it's like, I'm having the, like, it's okay. It's not you. Like, it happens to, but it's like, I'm in my 20s. Like, this shouldn't be happening to me. Why is this? Like, I was convinced I was um, potentially asexual mm. of just like, oh, I, I just don't like sex. I just don't enjoy sex. It's like, no. <laughs> you're a fucking bottom. <laughs> like, yeah. I needed oh a sign from space to just be like, you're not doing it wrong. You're, you're playing the wrong position on the team. Like, yeah, it's like, you're just, you're not bad at that. That's just not what you want to be doing. That's so interesting. And to sort of tie that back into the film, um, to make it kind of a, a larger point, um, like they talk about their, experiences prior to transition about like you know being with like uh gay men and things like that yeah which you know again like i i think it's interesting that like i think uh at least one of them was like a gay man before transitioning where um i think you know both of us were like quote unquote straight men before transitioning like their experiences are so different like are, are different but there is that like connection where it's like there was this fundamental dissatisfaction with it um, yeah. where, uh, you know, the problem was that they like were not being themselves enough to be intimate with someone because intimacy is, you know, an act of um, showing yourself completely to another person fundamentally, yeah, that's like regardless of what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, fully yourself to yourself how can you be intimate with another person you know um, Xanthra explains that sex with gay men was quote interesting I like how she like does visible yeah. air quotes with her fingers it was interesting and that she also thought that she was just bad at sex but just liked getting fucked so she went along with it and Jean says that the men she slept with quote for fun or for money um, except for one, um, didn't have a good time. Um, I remember mm. at one point she says that like gay men would like, like barely touch her with her fing uh, with their fingertips. It's like then why the fuck are they even like why? <laughs> like I, I couldn't imagine why someone would be having sex and be like repulsed. It's like what? You, why are we even doing this then? What's yeah. the point? Yeah, I don't know. And and I'll say this too. Of the two um, gay men I had uh, sexual experiences with in my, um, I'll, I'll just call it a hoe phase. Um, oh yeah. After my um, after my long term uh, girlfriend and roommate um, moved out, and before uh, Nebula and I had found each other, um, just bad. <laughs> Yeah. Just not very good, not very fun experiences. Again, also just not really getting into it, but like yeah. on paper it sounded very fun, like, oh yeah, yeah, come over, we'll just do and just like, oh, this is embarrassing. I'm not enjoying myself. Again, what's the problem? <laughs> like what is yeah. going on here? Like just trying to top again. It's just like that's not working. Like yeah. for one. Like, that's just not working. And, yeah, like, thinking I was attracted to men more than I actually was. And, I don't know. I, I guess that's just something yeah. I had to figure out over time, which was weird. Well, yeah, and I, I think that's fairly common. Like, um, I have not had any experiences with cis men. 
Um, but I've long described myself as pansexual and I still do. Um, but like it always felt somewhat fraudulent because I was, you know, attracted to everyone but cis men. Um, Mm. but I also think part of it too, like I have heard this is the case for like trans lesbians sometimes is that like before transition, they'll identify as like bisexual or pansexual because they know they're queer but they haven't figured out the gender stuff yet. So exactly. they feel an yeah. attraction to queerness, um, even though like they're not into men. I, I love my husband so much, uh, who is a non-binary man mm-hmm. um, and uh, transmasculine as well. Um, and I, you know, I find myself very attracted to trans men, certainly uh, very attracted to like masculine non-binary people but um just not cis men and i'm sorry you know yeah no maybe Maybe i can get into some very like faggy like uh bi guys maybe i don't know i i haven't met the right one look (laughs) um you know i say that but there are some femboys (laughs) there are some femboys yeah but i don't know they're like again that might be on paper that might be a for like a mental uh fantasy but i think if 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 a puss came to shove and i was face to face with said fanboy i don't think it would work Mm. yeah because like would they want you to top (laughs) (sighs) i I, I can't anymore Uh, that just doesn't work (laughs) yeah um, no, I... let me see if there's anything worth talking about in this section here, or if we could skip it. Um, just, just kind of talking over what, um, what they discussed. Yeah. Uh, Xanthra says that when she started wearing skirts and dresses, her sex life took a nosedive, but decided that she needed to dress this way for her, and that sex with men wasn't worth it, and they, quote, weren't that hot in bed anyway, which... Damn. I guess that makes the decision pretty easy. <laughs> like, your dick game sucks. It's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> I'm not God, missing anything. She's so... She's so based. I, like... She was yeah. just, like... Ugh. Ugh. It reminds me so much of, like, uh, Sigourney Weaver in, like, so many films, where she's oh just, like, a no-nonsense woman. You know? Yeah. yeah. Ugh. I'm, I'm so hot for her. <laughs> like, Jean B has this, like cute kind of carefree attitude fucking yeah, and oh, the quebecois accent is just i love it i love quebecois people quebecois baddies hit me up on twitter <laughs> but but xanthra on the other hand is just yeah absolutely take no nonsense um absolutely pulls no punches i love her mm-hmm. so much so then there's a kissing slideshow which is great there's, there's a couple of those so cute Jean explains how much better she enjoyed sex with straight men because they really appreciated her body. The way she fucking describes that, it was just like, they, which was like, they taste me. It was just like, ooh. Yeah. Jesus, okay. I've heard that like some, uh, like a lot of trans women can find, um, and especially like straight trans women, of course, like, um, having sex with straight men is like very affirming um and powerful and also yeah i mean straight men are are like very different like there are a lot of straight men who are like you know not misogynistic who are (laughs) like yeah who like truly like love women and like sex is you know an equal partnership with them and um, I have heard, not my own experience, but that, like, you know, sex with straight men can be very affirming in that way, you know? I can totally see that for sure. Yeah. Especially if you've only had sex with, like, gay men as a man, too. Like, depending on the kind of gay man and the situation you were in, like, it could have been very objectifying, you know? Yeah, like, I'm not interested in having sex with them, but there have been times where I'll be dressing especially... Um, flamboyant we'll just say that especially for uh the region where it's very much uh pretty plain drab bleak clothing on most people i just tend to stand out on one hand i'm i'm so worried that oh if people are looking they're clocking me and it's like well maybe not they might just think you're attractive 
or sometimes I forget that like because I'm so focused on my own thing living in, a, in the fucking conservative South that I kind of forget for a second that to people who don't know Nebula, it could potentially look like a lesbian relationship. And like, I don't see I've I've maybe have seen one lesbian couple out and about. So I kind of forget that like people might side eye that too if they don't you know if they don't know nebula's story or whatever and also like on that note you know we've been talking a lot about like uh gay liberation and gay acceptance um and i think that still mostly applies to like gay men like gay women certainly have had uh like more of a liberation like gay cis women specifically um but like because we live in a patriarchal society you know it's sort of like the intersectionality of it all sort of applies to like gay men in this in, in the same way where it's like they have it the easiest where like gay women are still like struggling in a lot of ways because of like sexism and misogyny even if gay acceptance is further along um so yeah i, I totally get what you mean where like uh you could you, you're catching these side eyes and you're like wondering what angle of hatred it is you know is this transphobia is this uh homophobia what's happening to me right now yeah what's happening but um <laughs> <clears throat> there there have been a couple times where Nebula will uh, whisper to me, like, after we leave an aisle or something, and just be like, that dude was totally checking you out, or something. And yeah, like, I believe it. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. Where, like, yeah, like, in in that moment, it's, it's very funny, because most, um, in most instances, my reaction will go, really? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's so like it really changes so quickly from the that's oddly affirming to that dude looked like a creep that's really gross oh <gasps> there's yeah. a cat outside yeah well, you're squirrel brained you know just like me for real um it's a stray oh no oh my god no you should see charlie and i in walks like he'll oh. literally okay one of the things charlie's been doing on our walks recently which i love is mm -hmm. uh, he'll take his little drawstring bag. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, he works at a, a pet store, so he'll put, like, food from the pet store that he gets really cheap into the bag Aww. so that mm -hmm. when we see stray cats, we can give them Ugh. a meal. Um, and he is, like, becoming so popular with all of the stray cats in the neighborhood. He's like a cat god, I swear to God. He walks around, <sighs> the cats follow him, they worship at his feet, and, like, me too, you know? It's a, it's a scene. <laughs> I'm so jealous. That's so adorable. <laughs> Aw. Yeah. Um, the next scene... Anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, I don't see the cat anymore, so I can focus. <laughs> Um, so as, uh, as Jean is saying that like, oh yeah, I really had this, you know, a much more, uh, positive experience with men, uh, after, uh, coming out, uh, Xanthra says that sex with straight men was awful. Uh, she talks about a man she slept with that gave her quote, the best oral sex and treated her like a woman. And then again, in, uh, as only Xanthra could, she goes, but right like stretching oh her neck out when she says it uh she's so cunt but <laughs> she couldn't handle it um emotionally because she could tell he just wanted her for sex that it ruined their relationship like yeah they were friends beforehand but then it was just like, oh, you're just using me for sex. This sucks. Now yeah. I can't even appreciate the sex because I lost a friend too. And that's, that sucks. Yeah, that's, that's real. And it speaks to that girl flesh idea again, where it's like, you know, you're friends with this person until he like sees you as a sexual object. And then you are just an object. You know, you lose, you yeah, literally, ugh. like in this case, she felt herself losing her humanity to this person, which fucking sucks. Arms, body, legs, flesh, skin, bones, and you. Good luck. All yep. over again. God damn it. Yep. Coming back full circle. It comes back around. 
Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> there's. I listened to that album again today for the first time. I think yeah. since we reviewed it, and oh Hell my god, yeah. I just love that album so fucking much. It's so good. I think I'm gonna download it so I can listen to it in the field. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that right now. I, I, I was gonna revisit mention it. it's time. There is this scene. It's it's another scene of them in bed. Uh-huh. Um, but this one, I don't know something about this one. It was so sensual. The way that Xanther is just like rubbing her body is just like, ooh, hold on this for a minute. Like, yeah, oh, it's it's so good. And again, yeah. like nothing explicit happens in these scenes except for the fact that you see them like naked. Like, there's no yeah. like penetration scenes in this, but they really do just present these like very gentle scenes. Yeah, except for okay, there's one later. <laughs> That I loved for a totally different reason because, again, like, fucking Twitter trans girls here for sure. Yeah. Um, it's a slideshow. It's not a video, but it looks like uh, Xanthra is, like, pulling Jean's hair really hard and, like, shoving her face into the mattress and slapping yeah. her. And it's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like they, they – but, like, the raw, like – sexuality of that in this like very sensual way where Oof. it's two people who clearly love each other very much yeah um, and it's very like gay in in that like they have the same kind of body you know mm-hmm. and they know what each other likes in a very special way it's like uh it's hard for me to talk honestly i gotta say it's hard for me to talk about this while i'm like in the field and away from like all of my partners like i so deeply miss my husband and like my girlfriend and like ugh, i want to see this girl i've been seeing too Ugh, it's horrible but um watching it this morning was rough because i was like Aww. they're so beautiful and it's making me miss what i don't have here right now yeah you know ugh. i really appreciate i think i mentioned this before but how they they love each other in a way that like i feel like is really facilitated and sometimes only accessible with someone who has like the same body as you yeah that was that was like pretty special i think yeah i I love those scenes for that yeah like those scenes like sharing that aspect of like um you know, gender fuckery, where it's, like, the the relationship you can have with other trans people, you know, and not just, like, you know, other, like, uh, trans feminine people, but, like, you know, I feel a very similar connection with my husband, you know? Even though we don't have the same bodies, there's still this, like, love and care and understanding that is... I, I don't know if it would be possible to have that with a cis person at this point for me. Um, yeah, I don't think so for me. Yeah. Maybe in the future at some point, but not right now for me. You know, it's T for T all the way, baby. And that's basically what the rest of this uh, here is about. Um, First, there's a there's a still that says uh, we have the right to be proud of our background, to be proud of our heritages without having them continually slammed in our faces by gender bigots. (laughs) It's like, hell yeah. Real and powerful. Yeah. Like... Ugh, just tying in those ideas we were talking about about like everyone's different and you have your own experiences and you know this like it's kind of going around in the discourse again the whole like uh hsts versus agp thing have you seen this um have you seen this have you heard about this i think a little bit of it but i'm not like super well versed that's totally fine, babe. You don't have to worry about it at all. I'll sum it up for you right now. It's like... Thank you so much. This, yeah. This, like, psychologist in the 90s, I think, maybe maybe they're, like, late 80s, but, like, around the time that this was made, mm-hmm. like, came up with a categorization of trans women where it was, like, you have your uh, homosexual transsexuals who are like gay men who are trying to trick straight men into having sex with them. And then there uh, are autogyne- autogynophiles who are merely just attracted to themselves as the idea, like they're attracted to the idea of themselves as a woman. 
Ah, and okay. those and and all trans women can be fit into these two categories, and it's like <laughs> oh. that's such bullshit. First of all, like the sexism <laughs> yeah. is insane. The trans yep. misogyny, is, especially, is fucking crazy. Right off the charts. Yeah, off the charts. It's like unreal. And like this guy's methodology was like he went to gay bars and he talked to oh. like four trans women or something. You know, well, that's and then a good there's like clinical s- stuff. Sample. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. exactly. Yeah, really he really he put so much thought into it, babe. Um Yeah. But like he put in know, the work. Good for him. Yeah, and the hours, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but th- speaking of Dwayne the Rock Johnson, he had to subject himself to so much techno and house mm-hmm. music at these at oh, these gay clubs it. and just oh, he had the earplugs in. Yeah, like Lana Wachowski's in the corner, like, you know, (laughs) everyone's dressed up like the Matrix. Yeah, exactly. He Um, was in the Matrix scene. (laughs) Yeah, he was. And he was one of the agents, okay? Oh, shit. Yeah, he's an agent of oppression, okay? I'm not even going to say his fucking name, but anyway. um, I think I know who you're talking about. See, again, going back to what we were talking about before, if you are just sexually attracted to yourself as a woman i don't fucking care that's fine yeah also like so many cis women regularly describe that as being like yeah, yeah I look exactly. at myself in the mirror. I'm like i'm hot it's like yeah it's a totally normal part of the human experience and it's also a common part of the trans experience too because it's like you finally have a body that you love you know yeah i mean i would be lying if I told you that I didn't experience that. Like, are you kidding me? I, I legit, I hated my body for like 30 plus years. I did not find myself attractive at all. I finally, at this stage of my life, consider myself attractive and even hot sometimes. I should be allowed to say that. Yes. Without some fucking creep side eye in me. Exactly. And also, like, it doesn't make what you're doing a fetish just because you're into no. yourself while doing it. It's so it's such a fucked up idea. But the the thing that like has been what I've noticed has happened in like some trans spaces is that like especially like uh younger transitioning or like better passing trans women will sometimes be like, well I'm, you know, homosexual transsexual and you're AGP, like turn like turning it into like a an insult to be AGP as opposed to oh, Jesus. HSTS. But like the joke the the like joke response is like, yeah, but like <laughs> this guy when he was coming up with the concept of homosexual transsexual was not like and this is a normal girl you know what i mean it's like no right, they're both yeah. freaks and that's the thing like uh but i i brought that up to say that um that's like an example of like trying to like put trans people trans women into a group where it, we d- we don't we it's a variety of experiences that we've had and we're all different you know these two trans women in this film uh were lovers and and knew each other and loved each other and they were very different and they're also very different from us you know living in the time they did um but we also relate about a lot of things jean explains that she's attracted to men physically exclusively and attracted to genetic women in every other way um and that she connects with people quote of her own gender where she's like i'm not into men in any way but physically like i don't want a relationship i don't want them romantically but then she's just like women i'm interested in talking to them i'm interested in them politically she says like physically emotionally everything she has such a strong connection to women but only wants to fuck dudes which you know valid yeah and real uh xanther talks about a friend v i think is the name she says Uh, that she fell in love with and that they were able to uh, relate to each other completely. Uh, Jean uh, says that she was having sex with a trans woman. This this is a very interesting part. I'm glad I wrote this down. Jean was having sex with a trans woman when she still identified as a man, as as a gay man. Yeah. The trans woman... Just like me, for real. uh, (laughs) Right? The... The trans woman uh, grazed her uh, nipple 
and Jean reacted in a way that the trans woman said, "Oh, well, you're you're a transsexual." Like that's all the evidence she needed, which yeah. is wild. That's wild. And it breaks the prime directive, okay? And John says uh, that she just needed another transsexual to tell her that, like, she always kind of knew yeah. that something was different, uh, but she needed a transsexual to tell her. I told Neb just this earlier today that there's a strong chance if I had a trans friend in high school who told me, oh, you're, you, I, I think you're transgender, I would have been like, oh, yeah, okay, probably, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> without, like, like, even at that point... With as little knowledge as I had about it at the time, like, I think all I would have needed to hear was a trans woman to tell me, oh, you know, this thing about you that I can pick up on you because you're dropping so many subconscious hints that not even your friends are picking up on. Like, somehow no one is seeing you as sus, which, again, what the hell? I was raising so many flags, (laughs) but... (laughs) Like, she needed, like, another, like trans woman to validate her right um and i definitely like felt that way you know because like i i know i knew for a long time i knew for years um but there was so much self-doubt you know and like i was you know um romantically and sexually involved with a trans woman for a while and still am um the same woman uh and when I was in a really critical moment, I was talking to her about stuff from the past and she was like, oh yeah, you're, you're trans, you know, like, wow. And that was like, that was the final tipping moment. Like I'd already pretty, pretty much decided at that point I was going forward with it, but that was like the point of no return sort of where like, I was like, I finally have this like very powerful validation, you know, that I kind of needed. I think like, that's another interesting thing about the film too. Like, is because it was made uh, 30 years ago, um, it has this, like, it, it was at a time where things were a little less standardized. Like, I feel like now with, like, online spaces, and this is, like, maybe something, maybe an advantage they have over us, where, like, we have online spaces, which are a benefit, but it's not an unalloyed good, where that there's there also comes this standardization which can also be helpful, but can also restrict, like, how you think about things. Where, like, they were describing, like, chasers, right? As being, like, a separate, like, sexuality. But, like, they didn't have that language. Um, But we have that language now, but then also, like, we lack a little bit of the moxie they had, I think. You know? We, we we, We still got the tea girl moxie, but they real, they had the real, like, stuff, you know? I don't think we have it easier. I think we have hardships, maybe different hardships. But, yeah, I mean, I know there's plenty of us who are still hardened, but maybe it's... Yeah, there's definitely, the, like, the attitude itself is different. I don't know. Something yeah. about their their fucking attitudes of just, like, take no shit. I don't know. It's kind of a classic image of, like, you know, a plane with, like, bullet holes in it. I think we've maybe even talked about this on this podcast where, like, you know, it's like, uh, these are the planes that came back and they had these holes. So we're going to, like, reinforce the other places where the bullet holes aren't kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, where we're seeing these women um, who are, like, living their truth and they're very powerful. Um, and we respect that about them. But on some hand, like, they they may have had to be that way. And, like, there's I think there's also plenty of trans women today who have to be that way. Where, um, for one reason or another, you and I are very privileged in that, like, we don't have to have that same kind of, like, strength and moxie, but we can still be ourselves. Uh, in part because of, uh, the like, women like these two who, like, paved the way for us, you know, in the past. I think on that note, I I really need to shower. I have uh, been awake for 16 hours and dug many holes and not showered. Um. I I totally understand. I mean, like I said, I'm in the exact, well, not the exact same boat. I dug absolutely zero holes today. But the girl stink remains strong.
No better way than uh, to transition to mention our sponsor this week is is Girl Stank, actually. It's, Girl Stank brings you yeah. this episode. Oh, I'm so glad Big Girl Stink got behind us, you know, like... Yeah, it, it, you know, it took a few episodes, but we got their attention somehow, and I couldn't be more thankful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, well, um, Moth, you're wonderful. I'm so glad that we did this, uh, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out what we'll talk about on the next one, and I hope you all join us for it, and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye.